Hey everyone, I have a very exciting show for you today. I am bringing on a real estate agent that I have worked with many times in Fresno. And specifically, he focuses on multifamily. He is the multifamily expert in Fresno, the person I call when I want to ask questions. So let's welcome Michael Hayes to the show. How you doing, man? Oh, great. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, why don't you just uh, introduce yourself, Michael, who you are, where you're at. Uh, people are going to want to get in contact with you. So if you want to give your phone or email, let's do that now. We'll do it again at the end. But people want to buy in Fresno and they should call you. So how, how should they do that? Excellent. Yeah, so Michael Hayes, and I've been in the real estate industry, as, as Michael said, for quite some time, probably back about 2004 is when I got into it. I'm a native of Fresno. My family's been here since the late 1800s. So if there's anything you want to know about Fresno, I'm the guy. Uh, you know, it's, uh, so, you know, in the start of my career, you would see prices in an area that were at an all time high back in 2005, 2006, this is just before the recession hit. Mm -hmm. And you would see class A properties on the north end of town that would be, uh, in, you know, 120,000 a door, you know, yeah. $150 a foot, a cap rate closer to five. And then in the southern part of town, which is, is the, uh, the blue collar area, we'll call it that, mm -hmm. is that you would see prices on door per door be 60,000 a door to maybe 70 or 80,000 on, on select assets. And the cap rates were in around six. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of where things started when Mike and I first met. Yeah. So uh, real quick, Michael, uh, where, how should they get a hold of you and what firm are you with? So let's just get that out of the way. James Hendricks and Associates. Uh, my number is 559-273-5556. And my email address is Michael, then the letter R, and then Hayes, H-A-Y-S. There's no E in Hayes, common mm -hmm. mistake, at gmail.com. And Michael, what I'll do for you is I will put your email as the first line in the description. So if anybody missed that, it will be in the description of the video. Okay, all the housekeeping out of order. And I liked where you started, right? Let's just call it 2005, 2006. Um, as my, as every, anybody that's following my story, that's when I was getting out of houses into small multifamilies, right? I was doing 1031 exchanges because I was selling houses at ridiculous prices. Like there was one in, in the Mayfair I sold for 260 that even today is only worth 190, right? So it was very inflated. And yeah, I was buying, I was buying C-class properties, 50 to 65K a door. And, you know, that's, that was near a peak, right? At least for that time. It was. Yeah. And let's make sure people realize really Fresno, you know, simply speaking has kind of, as you sort of highlighted, right? There's North Fresno, the newer part. And then there's like Fresno core older part. Uh, I was buying in the older part. I, I think I only own, I bet you I own less than five properties in what would be classified as North Fresno. So I've focused on the kind of blue collar as you, as you indicated, um, then that market rolled over, right? With housing and where did stuff go from there? As you remember? Oh, it, it dropped dramatically. I mean, you can't say it happened overnight. Mm -hmm. Commercial real estate follows residential by about a, I would estimate a six month lag period. So mm -hmm. there was, okay, it's happening to houses, but it's not going to happen on the commercial side as much. And then slowly it caught up to us. Uh, it was an awkward time on off for buyers and sellers at that time because nobody really knew where the pricing was. But when it settled down, mm -hmm. you know, things that were, let's say, in the north end of town that were 120,000 door, they dropped to 100,000 a door. Yeah. Uh, the properties down in, in the in the rougher, the blue collar area, um, you know, you could pick stuff up for 40,000 a door. Uh, yeah. 35. I mean, if they were distressed properties and the banks wanted to get rid of them, then you could, you could pick them up at a favorable price. Yeah, and a couple of things you said there, I wanna make sure people hear, I say it all the time, uh, multifamily and single family do not go in sync, right? You highlighted a yeah. six month gap. I've actually seen the gap be as large as 18 months because the financing is different, right? You have bridge loans and different commercial debt structure that makes refi time or then the, then the paper becomes due becomes that compelling event and really forces price discovery. Uh, so like from 2006 to 2009, there were transactions in multifamily, but it, was, it, it wasn't a consistent flow while single family was just like banks were 
once they had enough, they were just REOs were everywhere. Is that a fair representation? It is. It is. I mean, I vividly remember in 2009, I took on an assignment for a local university and they wanted to sell 84 condominiums out of a large condominium complex. Very cumbersome. Trying to get financing for that was just a nightmare. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally the buyer took his banker out back of the garden shed and whooped on him and said, I'm leaving your institution if you don't finance this deal. They, they got it done. But uh, so back then I was with a different corporate firm. I was ranked in the top 10% of the nation with that one transaction. That's how little was going on. Yeah. Uh, so it, 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 it slowed up dramatically. Yeah. And the other thing I remember, because you and I did our first deal together. When did we do, Diana? Was that 2009, 2010? It was right in that area. I could look back if I, I could no, grab my notes and, and no, find it for you. But. Let's call it, I think it was 2010 because I remember 2010 being a pretty busy year for us. We added a lot of units and I believe Diana was a part of that. So folks, what Diana is, it's a 10 unit C class. Um, it was definitely value add, right? It was, I forget, was that the one that was completely empty or was it like? You purchased two ten plexes next to each other. The first one had some tenants, right? Okay, uh, and then the second one had far less tenants. Yeah, and we picked those up for. Well, you know, it may, have been, it may have been the other way, but anyway, one one was yeah, yeah sparsely well, populated. <laughs> yeah, one had tenants. To call them rented tenants was probably a stretch. I think I had one paying tenant when we when we picked that one up, but yeah, that was that was for me. That was that was housing was coming back already but multifamily was just starting to feel the pain. And we picked up one of those. Were both of those from banks or one was from a private seller? I forget. One was a private seller, a local yeah. woman that uh, lost her husband and, and didn't know how to run the property. And so it got to the point where it was. And the other one was a gentleman that was having trouble with his bank. Right. Yeah. I remember those. And again, and you know, we were talking about the, 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 South side or the blue collar area getting down to like 35 K a door. We picked them up at 22 K a door. Yeah. Right. No, Both those were, yeah. Those and, and for all of you listeners out there, Michael was extremely aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was, I was a cheap son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, you know, deals like that can happen, but really what I wanted people to realize because I get so many comments today. I want to buy multifamily. I want to buy multifamily because they're expecting these immediate price drops like it's the stock market. That deal that we did in 10 was three and a half years after, you know, the collapse in single family homes. And frankly, single family homes were already starting to return when we put this deal together. So I, I keep telling people no price discovery, no price discovery, no pr nothing's retrading, but they just don't want to hear it. So I thought I'd bring on my guy, my commercial, my multifamily guy and just remind them, right? today. 2020, July, is very similar to me to like 06. We know there's a problem, but there's nothing retrading yet. We're like in that funny vacuum. Is that a fair comparison? It is a fair comparison. There are different dynamics as okay. far as, you know, we don't have the, the real estate debt bubble. Oh, now true. I see it more of the corporate side debt bubble. Yeah, uh, you know. that's a good point. Personally, I went defensive back in November in, in stock holdings just because everything out there seemed to be overvalued. Right. Um, and so, you know, and, and with multifamily, you know, it is back up into, you know, the levels that were, were peak levels back in 2006. Yeah. But we don't see, I don't see that um, precipitous climb right now. Everything is needing to stabilize. Yeah. So again, cap rates, let's call it 6% in 05, 06 for Fresno. Where do you think they got to at the, at the bottom, would, would a cap rate of 10 or 11% have been reasonable in 2010? Sure. Oh yeah, there were, there, were, there were properties that traded 10, 11, 12, 13%. Yeah. Know, they, they, were, they were, yeah, in, in gross rent multipliers down in the fours and the fives. Yeah, and then where were they at the peak? Gross rent multipliers, like 10? Um, at the peak, the GRMs raised up dramatically. They were close to 11 to 12 on the, on the, the A-class properties. In, yeah. the, in the B and C-class property, yeah, closer to the 10. Yeah, so again, folks, realize where we are because, again, we're, I'm trying with Michael here, I'm trying to paint a picture of history so you can translate it to today and why today there's, we're in this funny 
almost matrix like thing where price discovery just hasn't happened yet. 2005, the peak cap rates were call it six gross rate multipliers were 10 round numbers, right? They went down uh, during the depths of the repression. We realized they reverse, right? So cap rates go from six to 11 gross rate multipliers go from 10 to five, right? So, and all of that means values got cheaper. So now we come out of the bottom, right? 2010's a decade ago. Where are we today? Are we back to roughly Fresno's a six G, uh, cap rate, roughly? A six, a six cap rate in, in the properties that we trade the most. You know, yeah. I mean, the North End stuff, it's fun to talk about it, but the, the volume of those trades is, is very rare. Yeah. So the, the, the bulk of the transaction would be a C and B type properties. Yeah, and the they are stuff. back to where they were at the peak levels. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about Diana, just because it's fun to talk about. And I won't hold you to any of this, but we're just going to give people realize, right? So when you buy something at the depth of the bottom at 22K a door, let's realize it did need 100 grand. So it was really like buying it at 320, right? It wasn't turnkey at 220. So let's call it 320. So 32K a door. Where, where do you sort of peg them? Again, they're one bedrooms, they're 500 square feet concrete builds. I think they're still, they're flat roofs. Uh, I think they're window ACs, carport parking, a little courtyard. I'm just trying to paint a vision for people. Five mm -hmm. and five, alley access in the back. Um, what do you think they are today, conservatively? Oh, they're, they're, you know, they'll trade. The market's a little goofy right now, but uh, you know, 60,000 a door would be a rough guess. Yeah, I mean, if, even if we were to rewind it to January before it got goofy, 60K a door, 62, something like that. Yeah, somewhere in there, you know, for one bedroom, one bath. Yeah. I mean, it's all income driven, but it's, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, I just want people to realize where we are and where we're going. The other thing uh, I want to highlight, in 2010, the building produced about 4,800 income. They were about it's just under five grand. Uh, today, they're almost eight grand, right? We've seen, we've seen some pretty tremend, tremendous rental growth uh, in, the, in the one bedroom. So We have, oh yeah, across... Yeah. The board. I mean, I priced a property the other day down in the Tower District, which is kind of a little subculture area. They get a little bit of a higher rent. Yeah, I love the but Tower. They had the studios. Their average rent is like five thirty on their, you know, and they're they're kind of turnover adverse. They haven't done much. Uh -huh. When you do go do your market survey, I mean, they could be renting those for six seventy five. Easy. Yeah, yeah easy. in the tower, uh, you know. Yeah. So, and they're small. I mean, their studios are they're just shy of four hundred square feet. But, no, that's, but the yeah, fact that, that, that is small. there's a lot of there's a lot of people that are um, have left quite a bit of money on the table. Yeah, and that's the other thing. I I wasn't planning to go here, but let's go here. One of the things that when when California, when the our California governor, which I don't like, but whatever, that's okay. He came over the top and instituted rent control. What he really did is he hurt mom and pop landlords who hadn't raised rent in apartments. That's who he hurt. Yep. Nobody yep. else got hurt, right? Single family excluded for the most part. Um, if you're a landlord and kept mar rents up at market at all times, not hurt. But man, if you were a mom and pop and owned your property for 20 years and you don't want to raise rents on your tenants because you like them and, and all of that, you're crushed. I mean, what, what you could have sold sure. it for because the income approach has drastically changed with the expense driven and, and the nature that this rent control bill came in. You, is, it, am I wrong? Nope. You're, you're completely correct. And, uh, and I had a long discussion with an appraiser just two days ago regarding that because there's these people that see a property trade at a value that is fair and what the market is, but then they look at their property and say, well, I want to sell. I want the number that guy got. Yeah. And then we look at, we compare the rent rolls and they're off by $200 a unit, let's say. Well, yeah. You just, can't, you know, you the, just bank, can't get there. The, the bank doesn't care. I mean, the bank says, look, I, I'm, I'm, I, there's a little bit of latitude. You can, they can, the, the appraiser can sit there and say, okay, I can project an 8% increase in rents yeah for the units and take the lower end of the cap but that's about as much latitude as an appraiser is going to give you right now yeah if you had two buildings i mean just pick a number 20 units and you know they were identical side by side one was at market and one was at rents from call it 2016 before before we saw a rent run the value's got to be dramatically different because sure. it's all income based at that level it is <laughs> it's, it's so. hundreds of thousands of dollars difference if not millions at the right cap rate Right. You're correct. Yeah. So again, that's, that's interesting. And cause when I went through it and I looked at rent, I looked at what was in the bill. I'm like, this is going to hurt 
for a while. And just like this change in the market, it's only going to start hurting people a year or two after because buyers didn't really appreciate it in the beginning. Appraisers probably didn't appreciate it in the beginning, but the longer rent control is impacting, the mom and pop landlord is going to be crushed um, if they didn't manage rents. Cause you just, you can't make it up at 8% clip. It'll take you 15 years or they'll, if they'll ever. I priced another property down in a, in a little community south of us, Reedley. And same thing. It, I, it took, it's going to take three and a half years to get mm. to where the rent levels are today, Ouch. let alone it will increase in those three and a half years. So that, you know, they're five, six years out before they're up to market. Yeah. So I'm curious if we fast forward and we kind of look at what's going on today, I'll tell you what I see out there. And again, you're in the market, so I, I, I could be wrong, but again, we are seeing, um, Again, let's let's actually talk January first. Let's talk January behind. So before this health event, we'll talk to we'll talk COVID next. So coming into January, right? None of this is out there. I would say market uh, for multifamilies in Fresno uh, probably I would say was hot and getting hotter. Would that be a fair comparison? Again, thinking January. Yes. Yeah. Um, meaning values were going up, buyers were being more competitive, um, and and and. Cap rates were going down, hence values were going up. Is that a fair representation of January? You know, I would say yes, but incrementally. I okay. think the market had had kind of, people were realizing, even though, sure, you can obtain debt and we can go down that whole conversation later, but, you know, at, at some of the lowest levels that we've ever seen. Yeah. But they were realizing, you know, I can this is before the stock market was getting goofy, you know, yeah. there's other assets that you can be in. So it's okay. like, okay, I can get this return with this, or I get this return with that. That's a good point. Um, you know, so people were being a little more cautious, not as free willy nilly as they had been. What was the volume like? Like what was Q4 volume like? So Q4 19, was it flat year on year? Was it up, down? And, and rough guess. I just have no idea. I don't look at that data. You know, and, and it's funny, I don't really follow the volume that okay. much. Um, it was a goofy year for me last year. I spent an inordinate amount of time working on one giant transaction. Okay. So my volume was off though my, you know, I mean, not to pat myself on the back, but I sold the biggest deal of my life in October. It's a $44 million property. Nice. Uh, you know, but it was a six month all hands on deck to get this thing done. Yeah. Um, so if I, you know, I would say some of the smaller properties were trading at the normal level. Okay. Uh, some of the bigger properties, it kind of dropped off. You okay. Know, when I say bigger, I would say 40 units and above. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so let's talk about Fresno population before we get to, to COVID. Fresno still growing kind of, I mean, it's hard yes. to say what it is doing now, but yeah, no, Fresno is growing. It is. Um, you know, we're one of the few places in the state that, that still allows some growth. We have yeah. land to do it with. Uh, they do make it more difficult, but, uh, you know, we're, we're growing. Uh, and before COVID was, we had the lowest unemployment rate that in my Ever. life. Yeah. You know, so it was, you know, it, it, everything was clicking along just fine before COVID hit. Yeah. And I think one of the side effects of this, once it kind of works itself out, is I think Fresno is going to grow even faster. Because what I think is going to happen is, is LA, or let's just call it SoCal and Bay Area, where I happen to live. Um, people are going to realize, you know what? Fresno is only two hours away, two and a half hours away. I can get a hell of a lot of house for very little money. And you know what? That one time a month I need to go to the office, I can drive. It's really not that bad, right? Yes. Or heaven for sake, I could fly. Yeah, and... um, yeah I, think Fresno's gonna, I think Fresno will be one of the hot spots of California probably for the next three to five years is my guess. Uh, I mean, just a little bit, I mean, along that line, but off topic is that, you know, you're seeing areas south of San Francisco, let's say the Monterey Peninsula. Yeah. I have friends that are real estate residential agents in that area. They said their phones have just blown up. Yeah. That these people that are living in a high priced apartment and realize, look, I, you know, who knows how long I'm going to get stuck having to do this mm -hmm. work from home type of thing. I'd much rather work in a nice and be able to walk around in a nice area. Yeah. And um, in the houses down there are just flying off the markets. Values are, are jumping, you know, five, six offers on a property. It's, yeah. it's nutty. Fresno's maybe lagging that, but I could see it potentially happening. No, I think, I think, so I think single family, just to stay on that thread, I think single family for the next year or two is going to be, uh, is going to be up. 
um, because it's, it's that the, the a class tenants in these big cities are like, forget it. I don't want, I can't, I don't have an extra room for my office. I can't teach my kids. I can't walk my pet. I can't go outside because all this, you know, all the homeless are on the street. Get me out of here. And, and they're just going to plant roots everywhere. So it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting, interesting year. So let's talk about what's been happening the last four months. Um, what would you, what's going on in multifamily in the four months? And we can go anywhere you want from rents to vacancies to values to what's selling, what's not selling. Where do you want to go? What, it's okay. it, July. Well, we'll start 14th. with rents. I mean, yeah. rents, we're seeing they've plateaued. You know, yep. they're just, Makes sense. You know, it, it, uh, we're not seeing any rent growth. Okay. Um, there still is a lack of housing. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that didn't change. Yep. So we're not seeing the vacancies jumping up. Um, and the, the surprising thing of the whole deal is that we were all panicked to death that when the governor and they said, you know, no evictions, yeah. no this, no that, we're thinking, oh my goodness, all these people are going to jump on this bandwagon and there's yeah. people on the internet this is the way you work the system. <laughs> Our collections were almost the same as before. Um, yeah, that's crazy. It was, it was surprising. I think people realized, look, you know, they understood that this forbearance meant that you eventually will have to pay it or you get e evicted. And, and uh, you know, they just don't want to have that on their record. Yeah, it makes, so, makes the next rental. Yeah, really so, you know, we've weathered the storm far, far better than anybody anticipated. Ditto. I, I agree with that. I, my, my collections have been... North of 97% of normal, which and frankly I, yeah. is just about where it would be anyway. So sure, and and I'm you know I'm in the investment division of our company, but we do have a management side, and we manage uh, close to a thousand doors, and we would have the same time of percentages that you're talking of. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So what is trading? Is there any been any activity this last four months in multifamily? Yeah, I mean it's slowed up quite a bit, uh, folks everybody's just kind of a wait and see approach right now. Uh, the, the, in our business, there's, there's interest. I hate to say it, it but there's drugs, death and divorce. Yeah. Is there, that is always happening. Yes. And so those are, are motivating factors for people to have to do things every once in a while. The, the exchange trade guy that's looking to sell and leverage up to something else. He's sitting back right now. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's just kind of letting the, the dust settle. So, yeah. you know, volumes, volumes are definitely off. I mean, I closed a, a 12 unit deal in the middle of COVID, which was crazy trying to get in and do inspections and, yeah. and everything else. You know, but there, you know, it was one of the few transactions in that closed in May. So did that, I'm curious, did that go into contract January or February or did it go into contract? It, it went into contract as an all cash transaction Ah. and then COVID hit. And the buyer's financial advisors told him, do not deploy your money to go buy something. You go ah. get it financed. So we had to retrade the deal, which okay. made nobody happy. And it took far longer than expected. But um, yeah, we got it across the finish line. Okay. All right. And 12, 12 what, what, did, what, did it, what did it close at? They traded it at 95 the door. You oh, know, wow. in, in a, in a, it would be a, a B class property. Uh, okay. It was about a 5.6 cap. Oh, wow. Sub six. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was a decent deal. It was a, uh, a, an infill piece for a, an investor that owned a bunch of properties around there. So he ah, wanted it. He wanted and that. So he one. was very motivated to get the deal done. I mean, Got it was. It. So. What zip code? Hmm. Uh, I mean, or North South. It's okay. Yeah. Anyway, McKinley and Chestnut. Got it. Okay. I know that. Okay. Area. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. All right. That's okay. I, I think I it's think, seven two eight. But yeah, I think you're right. I think it is seven two eight. I think in zip code. Sorry. <laughs> That's how I look yeah, at my no, market every okay. day. <laughs> What's here? What's here? What's here? Um. Yeah. So let's so let's talk about the 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 you know, what do you see? I guess how does this play out in your mind? And neither one of us has a crystal ball. Yours is as broken as mine. Uh, and let's focus on multifamily. So I'll tell you what I'm thinking. So you're not on, you're not on the hot seat. Um, so for the rest of the year, um, I think rents stay flat. I don't see rental growth anywhere. I would I agree. That, I think that's yeah. a solid bet. I think interest rates stay down, but I believe Fresno is tagged as a secondary market. So, uh, you know, any new loans, if it used to be 70%, now it's 65. It used to be 65%, it'll be 60. So any buyers need to bring in more cash. I'm going to, I'm going to answer. Can I answer to the, to yeah, your thoughts of course. as you're going? Please. Uh, 
so spoke with a lender yesterday. Okay. Uh, and the lending institutions, you can, you can get 25% down. But wow. the caveat that's going on right now is that it's called the COVID reserve. Ah, you escrow. have to hold in reserves yeah. 12 months of principal and interest. Okay. So they will give you a less down, but then it's backfilled with having to hold these reserves. So uh, historically, I, yeah. you, you always hear about, oh, I can get it for 25% down. I always, when I, I'm, I'm conservative by nature. Yes. I always tell them 30%. I remember. 30%. <laughs> Uh, I figure thirty percent down because the banks will promise you one thing, and by the time it gets across the finish line, Absolutely. it's much closer to thirty percent down every time. Um, but yeah, okay. You know, and then what? What is the rates? Are they are they new? Are new mortgages in the fours? No. Well, it depends. If you're going institutional money, once again, a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. you you can get stuff in the three and a halves. Okay. Um, and if you're going more of a local, and when I, a local lender, you're probably three and three quarters to okay. four and a quarter. Yeah, somewhere in there. That's what I would expect new money to be at. All right. And then the biggest question is cap rates. My guess is, see, this is hard. I mean, I could see cap rates go in both directions. I could see a world where uh, it's a little more skittish, a little more risk on. So cap rates go from six to seven. They probably don't explode higher, but I could see them go higher. And then I could also play it into my mind the other way. It's like people got to live somewhere. The stock market's wacky and crazy. Um, you know, you need water, food, shelter. So, you know, maybe people focus on multifamily. Uh, again, my crystal ball is broken, but do you think cap rates stay flat, go up a little, go down a little as we head into the next 12 months? They might inch up a little bit. Yeah, just a little, yeah. Uh, but I don't see a big increase. You, you look at the, the global picture of, of all the asset classes in real estate, and you've yep. got industrial is actually leading right now. No question. Yep. Industrial is getting rent growth, yep. um, it, it, which is surprising in this environment, but it is. And multifamily is, sec in, is a close second. Uh -huh. uh, so... Um, it's it's safe within the real estate world. You know, I would shy away from retail or office. So they're 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 yeah. struggling. <laughs> yeah, I, retail and office strip malls. Um, actually, I don't know. I haven't. I've never looked in Fresno for these assets. You may know. You may not know. But are there just huge empty or nearly empty office and retail? spots in fresno i have no idea i've never mm, you see some very big box stores that are you're going out you know? yeah. so yeah there's there yeah i wouldn't want to own a big yeah big building yeah, yeah. That, that triple net building's not looking really good right now yeah scary okay um so where do you think where do you think uh you know where do you think multifamily goes you think multifamily is a solid investment if your time frames the next 10 years because i think fresno I grows and I, and I and i appreciate you saying the next 10 years yes so many people think they're going to jump in and jump out. They're going to get this price appreciation. And, and, you know, it's just, that's not what real estate is designed for. I, yes. it, it's, you know, if you're in it for the long run, like Michael has been, and, you know, he, he held on to his assets for quite a time, quite a long time. Yeah. Uh, he divested of a few and, you know, it was time, you know, he ran the course with them. Yeah. Uh, but to, to think you're going to go in and, and just, you know, and reap a profit in a year or two, yeah, it, very difficult. You don't, you know, yeah. the people that buy those properties, you see those properties turning over and over and over and it's the same property. It's like, what is this problem? Well, everybody buys too high. They don't do the proper <laughs> financial analysis on it. They think they're going to kill it in a couple of years and then their, their, their preconceived plan didn't work. It's like, well, I want out. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. It felt like in 2019 that the syndicators, right? People pooling capital, some reason found Fresno and they were out and they were frankly overpaying for, for assets. Did you see any kind of syndications come in and just buy a bunch of stuff? You know, I read about it and I've heard about it. Did I actually see it happen where a syndicator or the, you know, one of these, you know, blockchain or, you know, all the, the, these, these different things that have come up yeah. uh, have taken down any particular assets in, you know, maybe I missed that boat, but I haven't seen okay. it dramatically shoving property. I haven't seen where something was just like way overpaid for. Like why in the roll it? That does happen in some of the small units, four yeah. units and below is you, you yeah. get the, the mom and pops that, that just, you know. They just they, overpay. They, they don't. Yeah, they just overpay. I don't want to be. 
derogatory. Yeah, they, they just overpay. Yeah. Yeah. Residential when you can, yeah. Re residential, you can still overpay. It, it happens. Yeah. Dumb money mm -hmm. sometimes comes out. Yeah. So I think, again, I think if you look at Fresno in a 10 year horizon and you stay in multifamily, which you and I both love, um, I think a couple of things are certain. Fresno will be bigger in 10 years. Yes. Yes. Rents will be higher in 10 years. Yes. You know, cap rates, you know, you know, assuming, you know, World War III doesn't happen, cap rates will probably be six to seven. I mean, it's just, that's where they trade in a healthy market. It, yes, I would agree. Yeah. You know, and again, if you- The, if the thing that we've, the, the one thing we haven't touched upon is the, uh -huh. the lack of development in Fresno. Ah, let's do that. Yes. You know, and, and the north end of town has developed, I think they put a thousand units in up in northern Fresno. Wow. And their rents are crazy high. $1,800 a month. I mean, we're talking the B and C properties, you know, they're renting from 700 to a thousand. I mean, yep. we're talking, you know, a thousand dollars more per month. Yep. I've read statistics where they have overbuilt a little bit on the North end. Mm. Uh, there's only so many people that can afford those kind of rents and Fresno is still pretty primarily a blue collar kind of yep. a town. Uh, but nobody can afford to build the lower end assets yeah. and bring them to market and rent them at seven hundred and eight hundred dollars a month or a exactly. thousand, which where a lot of people can afford. So the the desire for those units, the B and C properties, is going to be there. there I mean, it, yeah. it will always be there. That is why I. That's why I mean, we've known each other over a decade. That's why I play there, because the, you cannot build for what I can buy. And, Correct. and, and oh, by the way, the supply is not getting larger, right? Supply is dwindling all the time as demand increases. It's a, that's why we've yeah. seen amazing. I mean, there was a decade of my ownership of property where rents didn't move, didn't move houses or apartments yeah. just didn't move the last three years. 30% easy. Mm -hmm. it's been it's been it's been healthy the last no, no. I, yeah. and so if you would have bailed out three years ago you would never have seen no. the benefits of uh, it. yeah so. a, a knit yeah it's um it's a great I, again you're going to see me owning assuming i'm alive which knock on wood i will be i'll own more properties in a decade than i own now um i do retrade because when somebody wants to overpay for something i own i will gladly sell it because i know where i can uh, i watch my market enough i can i can move my capital around but yeah, I, I, I love Fresno. Fresno's growing. It'll be bigger in 10 years. Uh, I love the market. So Michael, how can people again get a hold of you? Because uh, I know there's a lot of people that watch my channel that want multifamily and they need to talk to you. You're my guy. So let's make your phone ring. Sure. No, and once again, it's Mike Hayes and it's James Hendrickson Associates. Uh, phone number 559-273-5556. Excellent. And let's just do something fun again out of nowhere. So we'll see how this goes. What are some fun facts about Fresno, right? Your family's been there since the late 1800s. What are some fun facts about Fresno just off the top of your head? Oh, fun fact. Uh, you know, Fresno oftentimes will be kicked around a little bit, you know, yeah. just, it, you know, whatever. But Fresno, the, the quintessential perfect day in, in someone's mind is 72 degrees yeah. and low humidity. Yeah. Fresno has more... 72 degrees and no or low humidity than most any other place in the United States. Now, granted, we have cold and nasty and we get hotter like 106 <laughs> yesterday, but th those perfect days, that's a fun fact about Fresno. And I, yeah, uh, I agree with that. Fresno, um, yeah, if you like 72 to 75, you have more days in Fresno like that uh, than any other place I've been. You are so right. So that, that's awesome. And that's why, again, cool. I think more of these rich Silicon Valley folks are going to move to Fresno when, once they figure it out. Wow, that drive's not that hard. Yep. So that, that's always a fun fact because there's, we're always trying to find things about Fresno that are on the positive side because it's easy to beat up. You know, you know, we were the fifth largest city in the, in the state. I don't yep. think most people realize that. I've said that many times. Fifth largest in the state and, more, oh, by the way, largest not on the coast. Correct. Think about that. So, Michael, thank you for giving me a half hour of your time. It's always fun. Um, get ready for your phone to ring. I think, I think you're going to get some phone calls. Great. It was a pleasure. It was good catching up with you, Michael. All right. Take care.